Dr. Omar Zain, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Alhamdulillah. And as I mentioned, uh, that um, last time uh, when I had a session with you, I learned uh, something very, very, uh, like it opened up my mind. And, uh, you know, you've opened up my mind many times, but I'd say that the way you opened up my mind last time was like, really like a big bomb for me in a sense. It really like opened up my mind. And, uh, and I'll share with you how you opened up my mind. But then the reason I want to share with you is that because I took what you said and applied it to the Quran and then I want to do that in front of you, meaning in terms of what I'm thinking. And then I want Very your good. reflection, your reflection on what I was thinking. Okay. Good. So, good. Last time uh, we were talking about psychopaths and the traits mm. of psychopaths, if you remember. Mm. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and we were talking about how they're manipulated, you know, they manipulate people, they're uh, uh, pathological liars, they don't have guilt, they don't have remorse, they have shallow emotions, they, and you know, kind of like uh, they have this need for stimulation, they're rash, they're harsh, they're, uh, you know, they're, they have all these poor controls, they're, they're, they're impulsive in nature. And so we were talking about around these discussion of these uh, these types of psychopaths. So there's a verse in the Quran, <clears throat> and and you know, I started thinking about the Quran, and the Quran presents to us many psychopaths, like the Pharaoh, like as a psychopath, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, and and but there's one particular verse that I thought that the Quran really describes this kind of like the justification for the hellfire. Uh, so I'm going to uh, read to you the verse and then tell yes. it, translate it. And then I want your reflections on my reflections on that particular verse. So, and, and, and how I take that verse. So Allah says in the A'raf, And we have raised for the hellfire We've raised many for the hellfire amongst the jinn and man. And then it describes these people. They have hearts with which they don't think. Right? Mm. And they have eyes with which they don't see. And they have ears with which they don't hear. They are like cattle. Balhum adal. They are even worse than that. Ulaika humul ghafilun. These are the heedless people. So basically, the way I took this verse, based upon our last conversation of a psychopath, a liar, person who has no sense of empathy, you know, he is he's charming. He's a great liar. He's certified sane in in one of your sentences in the book. Like he looks very sane. But this person has no empathy. He's nice because of the worldly advantages of being nice. He has no empathy, but if he gives, he gives it because to be seen kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, and, and so I kind of like connected this verse with that idea that you have in your book, because when Allah is saying they have hearts with which they don't think, meaning they have lost that inner empathy they've lost that inner reflection and so they have eyes with which they don't they have hearts with that don't see meaning they don't hearts that don't see what is true so if you criticize them all they see is that they're being criticized not that they're being corrected for example they have ears that don't hear because they don't want to hear the truth they only want to hear what they want to hear right and so they have it's like they have no ears they have no eyes they don't see the signs of Allah all they see is their interests and uh, yes. so, so these the people, Allah says, they're like animals then. They're like dead wood. And if you have dead wood, you put it in fire, you know. And uh, so, yes. so this is, so now when it comes to, I was now thinking, this is where I will ask for your reflections. So I was thinking, okay, so, you know, how does this work? So like me, so my test is to see, 
do I become more empathetic over time? Or am I in my journey to become like a psychopath over time? Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. And so if I'm in the direction of just like that man that killed 100 people, but because he had traveled a little bit more than half the distance, he was given mercy. So even though I may not have, I may not be completely a psychopath, but if I'm on my way to be a psychopath, then that is kind of like grounds for, well, you were going to become a psycho. You were on that way. Or if you're on a spiritual path, it doesn't matter if you're praying or fasting or doing all the rituals. But if you're not in the path of becoming more empathetic and seeing the truth and having deep thought and deep reflection and looking at nature or Allah's creation and kind of like surrendering based upon not culture but intellect, if you're not on that path, no matter what rituals you're doing, then you've lost the point in a sense from the perspective of the heart. And so so this is this is the thoughts that came to my mind. I even talked about it in one of my talks. Uh, I used this particular verse to talk about, and I connected the idea of being a psychopath with uh, this verse together. And that, you know, kind of like the heart's going through this journey of whether you'll end up being empathetic or whether you'll end up being like a psychopath. So now I want your mm. reflection. Okay, well, there are different levels of psychopathy. There is psychopathy that is um, appears to be uh, some sort of inherited condition. There are different schools on this. And there are different levels of uh, psychopathy. Mm. So it's not, uh, it's not clear, cut and dry. People would like to put it in terms of black and white. There are psychologists and psychiatrists who uh, are apologizing for the psychopath by saying, well, they, have, they are incapacitated. <laughs> because uh, they have no sympathy, no empathy, and they have no conscience, mm. um, and they have no sense of guilt. But as I pointed out to you, they can act all of these, you see. Mm. They, <clears throat> they, they become the perfect actor. This is why Jews, uh, for example, are uh, upper-level actors, you see, because they've had to do it in order to survive for a very, very long time. Mm. So they learn. So we, we're also acting as Muslims in different Muslim countries to survive. Or we think we're acting yes. at least. Yes, and there there's different levels of it. And uh, there are those amongst the psychiatrists and psychologists who study this phenomena who say, well, the psychopath is not acting. He really can't feel. He really can't uh, understand uh, with any degree of empathy or sympathy the other person's. Uh, and he has no conscience. He doesn't feel any guilt whatsoever. And that is a, that, that, that is a, mm, a differentiating factor. That's a line. You see mm. this this absence of guilt. Something has happened to them uh, so that there is no guilt. You take somebody like um, Stalin, for example. Now, Dr. Uh, Lubachevsky, who wrote the book called Ponerology, mm-hmm. which I am actually just reciting uh, what you read in my book. I'm not, none of that is original. Maybe my uh, interpretation of it may be a little bit original, but most of what I'm citing comes from Dr. Lebachovsky. And uh, uh, he describes Stalin as a brain damaged individual who suffered uh, some sort of infection or insult uh, very early in life as a baby. And this affected the frontal lobe of the brain and uh, 
it destroyed his ability to think with any degree of compassion for other people. So, Levitchovsky doesn't let call me him ask, a psychopath. Let me ask you, uh, let me just, uh, Dr. Let me ask you this: Is it is it then by chance that the Quran keeps referring to the the forehead, nasia no. kavi no. batin khatiya, the forelock, the forehead, no. a lying yes. for? I mean, this literal lying forehead, meaning yes. that it's one way. La nasia tin kavi batin wrong decisions, kind of like that's the literal meaning of. Yes, that no, this is no accident. There is a, not just a, a psychic component, but there is a physical component to the a correlation between the right and the left half of the brain. And all of this has to be in perfect synchrony. And if there's any kind of damage, then this synchrony is just like a it, it, the synchrony doesn't exist, and you become handicapped. The same thing happens with the sexual development. Uh, I tried to explain this before of the brain. If there's an imbalance in the hormonal uh, influence on the development, then the brain of a male can become a female and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And this is responsible for a long a large component of the LGBT um, population. Not all, mm. but their majority is brain damaged. Okay? <coughs> and so this, this same thing happens here. So when one is considering these matters from a, uh, the perspective, the legal perspective of the Islamic legal sp perspective, one has to have uh, a, a very sophisticated degree of knowledge here, which most alim lack, okay? Almost all of your alim have no idea about the brain's development. Mm -hmm. They have no idea about the brain's function. They have no idea about the neurological consequences of the slightest influence Okay. So what None you're of this is to, in there. If, if, if I'm on the same page as you, you're talking about forensic psychology in a sense that if somebody comes to court, he has done different crimes. We need to determine, yes. like, was this uh, because of a mental, uh, like, the brain damage yes. that he has, yes. or was this like yes. his choosing of to do so? So yes. that's why this is complicated now, because. Yes. Exactly. Okay. There are psychopaths okay. who who choose to murder and they know they're doing wrong. They just don't care, you see. Mm. So when you when this is brought into a court of law, you have to differentiate between that so that psychopath and the sociopath who mm. perhaps makes an error in judgment and actually mm. does care about what they're doing, okay, but has been conditioned. OK, mm. so one has to be put to death. The other one has to be separated from the population. Uh, it, it's it's kind of like that. The one who actually decides who chooses uh, to murder because they just don't care. This one has to be put to death, mm -hmm. even if they're brain damaged, because they can they can never you let God sort them out. I, I they're one of my favorite preachers was was a fellow from uh, Michigan somewhere. He was one of these uh, these white fascist types, and mm -hmm. he said, "Look, just kill him and let God sort him out." <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I I I lean in that direction because uh, if you're too liberal about these matters, then over a period of time things get forgotten, the legal briefs are lost. And the person is then released back into the general population and they just recommit their crimes. And then that makes you, who made the decision initially, responsible for the additional murders, mm -hmm. you see. So if I'm sitting on the, on the council, let's just say we have a tribunal and, uh, you know, I have a vote in the matter. My vote was going to, is going to be no mercy. You put this one to death, okay? 
because they can never, ever, ever be trusted. Never. Mm. Okay. And there's no sense in putting them in a prison and feeding them on the taxpayer's mercy for the rest mm. of their lives. Because these people add up. 20% of the population goes in this direction. Okay. Mm. So that's a big burden. And that's the tax burden that nobody needs. Okay. Mm. That's not what uh, the the providence of Allah is for. It's not to sustain their life. Their, uh, the life that's to be sustained is the life that is productive and is merciful and is beautiful and is contributing to the welfare of the community. All these others need to be separated or put to death. Okay. So, so is you this have one, of the, one of the reasons that Islam has such strict punishments is because there is a larger populate portion of the population that has that tendency, but just haven't done it yet. So it's like, boom, yes, you know, to yeah. just keep everybody they're, in they're, line kind of thing, because the tendency is there. Well, yeah, the ten tendency is there. Now, the, the, the statistics differ from uh, from place to place and from uh, off, from from writer to writer, researcher to researcher, but there's a sort of a general agreement that somewhere between one to two percent of the population are uh, are, are psychopathic, and mm. of these, you you've got a large percent who are just out and out, uh, you know, murderers, uh, and they they just don't care. You take somebody like um, uh, let's go back to Stalin. Uh, Dr. Lubachevsky said that he, he's not a psychopath. He called him a character path, a character oh. path, okay, because of the brain damage. Well, there's very little difference between a fellow like Stalin and a ordinary psychopath who just murders as an opportunity to fill his belly or whatever the case might be because he's just a hardened criminal and he, he really doesn't care. Those fellows exist. They have no guilt, but, and they know what they're doing. But because they've been so mistreated by the system, they just don't care anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. We have many confessions in that direction, if you read the, the forensic uh, uh, blotters, uh, so to speak. But uh, Stalin, you know, look, look how many millions he murdered, you see, mm -hmm. because he was not stopped from put, getting into that position of power. Okay, and this is where the alim are falling, okay, and failing. Look what they did. They let Saddam Hussein get into power. Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein was not a, uh, he was a sociopath, not a psychopath. But he and his sons, uh, they followed in his footsteps. And they also didn't care who lived or who died unless they were important to them. And what I, what I mean by important to them is, is somebody who benefited what they wanted for their selfish purposes, you see. Mm -hmm. So the psychopath is completely and totally focused on the self. And this is what happened to Kabil. Now, there are scriptures in Al-Turat, and I'm sure they are in, uh, in the Quran as well, that say something about the conscious being seared. In other mm. words, it's just you, you put a hot brand there and you, you burn these neural circuits and they just don't exist anymore. So mm. there's something that happens along the way and it's very difficult to say who it happens to, but you can see the results. Who does, does Allah sear and who is just seared by virtue of our mistakes, you mm. see. Uh, so that's, that's the line where we have to uh, try to be discerning. And I'm here to sit and tell you that most of your alim sitting in this seat of judgment today do not have the capacity to make the correct decisions mm. because they have no understanding for this matter, none. They're looking abstractly at legal decisions. So they're lacking any empathy for the person who's standing in front of them. Their mm. empathy lies with the reputation of the Sharia. 
okay, mm -hmm. not with the reputation uh, of the uh, of the actual science involved. They don't mm -hmm. care about the science. They don't know about the science. They're mm -hmm. only caring about their reputation, and this reputation has something to do with the rep what they they link this reputation with the reputation of Islam itself, and that's mm -hmm. a mistake. That's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. Islam is vibrant, Islam is dynamic, Islam is here at the moment. Islam looks at everything, not just a legal decision that somebody made 700 years ago. That mm -hmm. is irrelevant when it comes to looking at the moment that you're dealing with and looking at the person that you're dealing with who may or may not have been brain damaged or who may have made the decision to murder those hundred people and not give a damn about it, you see, because they're incapable of giving, of caring about it. And you have to have some sort of knowledge here that, it, that helps you make those kinds of decisions. And when you can't make that decision based on knowledge, then you have to make a decision based on the community safety, you mm -hmm. see. And so whether or not a man is put to death is irrelevant here. Maybe you can't make that decision, but you know in your heart of hearts that if there's any opportunity for this man to return to the general population, he will kill again. Okay. Mm. So uh, whether or not he does it consciously or unconsciously, you don't know. Only mm. Allah knows, you see. Mm. And so this is why, for example, in the literature of the Al Torah, before the Jews completely uh, uh, fiddled it, uh, uh, the there were these places of refuge, these cities of refuge, where you would send these people, and they had to stay there. And there would be a cordon of guards around the place, and if anyone tried to leave that place, they were put to death. Mm. End of discussion, okay? And that was the buffer, okay, for this for this lack of knowledge that I just described, okay? Mm. So, uh, and, and uh, if you do something like that, then you're kind of off the hook. But if you just make arbitrary decisions based on a, a lack of knowledge and just be based on what somebody said 700 years ago, you've got a problem, okay? That's a very because important point you mentioned about the buffer. That's, yeah. you know, they, so their, their first response was kind of empathetic in a sense that instead of mm. killing them they're like okay look go over there live over there and mm. you know if, if they can't live with that then there would be consequences yes yes because it, you see there are cases where you can't make a decision uh as to life or death because you just don't have enough knowledge you don't have enough facts but you have enough of what we would uh, call this instinctive uh, feeling. This is something that women have more than men. Uh, mm. they, 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 they know something's wrong. You know, it's, your wife will come to you at times and, and, you know, she's upset. And you know she's upset and she can't tell you why. Okay. Mm. It's because she's sensing something that she cannot explain to you. And you're not getting it. OK, mm. because the, there are areas that the, the woman senses this danger, impending danger, and there are areas where the man senses it and mm. they're, they're different areas. Oh, the well, man is a well. bit more. Yeah, yeah the, the man is a bit more uh, 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 clearer when he tries to describe the danger, whereas a woman, she just doesn't know. She just knows something wrong. OK, mm. and you have to if, if men don't listen to their women uh, at times like this, they're going to have a problem. They're mm -hmm. going to, you know, walk off a cliff or somebody in their family is going to be hurt or somebody in the neighborhood is going to suffer a great loss because they did not listen to their wife. They did not take mm -hmm. a look. The, the, the wife is like a, uh, 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 an indicator on the path. Go this way. OK. So um, these 
kinds of moments when a judge is trying to make a decision, you, you have, he's got that instinct, but if he's only thinking in legal terms and he lets that fellow go, he becomes responsible because he's not listened to his heart. Mm -hmm. See, there's and a book out the there. Heart it's just, called, there's a book out there called Gift of Fear, which talks about how this state of fear, especially in women, is like a gift. Like they have, like what you're yeah. talking about. They have in, this intuitive ability. And there's there's a book on this that that women feel fear. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that reminded me of, you know, when the, the mother of Musa put him in the, you know, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Red Sea, I guess, in or the Nile, the sorry. Past, yeah, 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 this is, this is true. And men have this instinct, uh, and even when they're in positions of, uh, of um, authority, and they kind of know they're doing something wrong, but they, they think they've got all the bases covered legally. And this is the problem with legalism, you see. Legalism does not address these finer points, these subtle exchanges that take place in the moment. So legalism is a, a way in which men uh, sort of sociopathically, if you will, hide from their insecurity, from their own insecurity, and they then take pride in this legalism. And then when you try to confront them with the error, they rebuff you and say, I've done everything correctly. You see? Mm -hmm. Da da da. And they can they can scientifically point it all out and justify their position. Well the Jesuits can do that too, you see. And they do this, and they, then they say, oh, well, we, we committed those, uh, those sins over there for the greater good, so we're absolved from responsibility, <laughs> you yeah. see? Yeah. And this is what yeah. the legalist does on the bench. And Alim are hiding behind legalism now, uh, especially those fellows, uh, those fat-bellied fellows with four and five wives in Pakistan and Somalia and wherever else they are. You know, they've got the women... They've got the, you know, 20, 30 grandchildren, and the young men in their congregation don't even have enough money to put rice in their bowl, let alone afford a wife. You know, this is not, and they're hiding behind legalism to do this, you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're taking your money to do it, you see. And so uh, this is not Islam. And this is, psycho this is sociopathic, if not psychopathic in a certain sense. Mm. Uh, there are psychopaths in position like that, you know. The scripture makes that clear. Yeah, and these are the these are the the ones who dress up the finest. They have the greatest turbans and the longest gowns, and they memorize all the scriptures. They know all the hadith and da 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 da. They do everything perfectly outwardly. Well, this is what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did, and this is why Prophet Isa was angry with them, because they. He said, look, you know all these things, but you are prevented by preventing the, the people in your congregation from entering the kingdom of heaven, from mm -hmm. entering that which is beneficial and good for them. Mm -hmm. You're preventing this, you know. So you, it, it's, it's like they lock the gates to heaven, mm -hmm. see. Uh, and this is what legalists do. And... It's a form of psychopathy. Okay. Mm. It is. It is, in fact, a form of psychopathy. There's a fine line between what you want to call psychopathy and sociopathy. And there are people who learn to do this. Okay. If you look at the entire Jewish world, that is a group of people, whether they're Chinese Jews or Afghani Jews or South African Jews, it doesn't matter where they come from, what their ethnic background is, they're all Jews. Mm -hmm. And they all just defend the psychopathy of Zionism. Mm -hmm. When push mm -hmm. comes to shove, there's very, very few of them who won't defend this. And mm -hmm. even the, even the uh, Orthodox Jews in Israel <laughs> who do not support Zionism are still taking advantage of it, you see. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, if you're still living in your father's, 
if you're living in your father's house and he's a bloody psychopath doing all these murders and everything and you can't stop him, why stay there? You see? Mm -hmm. Why stay there? No. Any reasonable man will leave his father's house and maybe mm -hmm. he'll come back when he's strong enough to kill him, you see? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, people, people don't think in terms like this because, well, it's not the liberal thing to do. Oh, mm -hmm. Dr. Omar, you're so incentive. How can you think in these terms? Well, these are not my terms. These are the terms of the scripture, okay? Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is reflecting what's in the scripture because the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much more severe than me by far, mm -hmm. okay, when it comes to these <coughs> final judgments or what yeah. we might want to call these final solutions, you see, mm -hmm. because they are, in fact, final. No, we haven't exhausted this this topic of psychopathy. We've only broached the surface here. Mm, so uh, it's 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 very subtle and it's very involved with neurological damage uh, and damage that we we cannot see, but we know exists. And there's a fine line between discerning that and discerning other forms of psychopathy, which are also called sociopathy, the the borderline personality who just uh, does, who knows they're doing wrong, they even feel guilty about it, but they do it anyway. Uh, it's kind of like the drug addict or the sex addict, you see. Uh, uh, they only do things when they know they can get away with it, but they always do it. Mm -hmm. And if you cooperate with them, you just enable them, you see. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole world is now enabling the Jewish nation, which is the prima donna, prima donna psychopath. But let me just say one more thing here. The people above the Jewish nation, who are at the very tip of the pyramids, even above the Rothschilds, they are managing and misguiding the Jews as well. Mm. You see, and this has been going on for a very long time, especially since the last temple was destroyed. Mm. And that last temple was actually already the third temple because you had Solomon's temple. Then you had the temple built by the people of Ezra after the Babylonian captivity. And then you had Herod's temple. Mm. And then you had another fourth temple already tried to be built during the fourth century under Julian the Apostate, you see. Oh, and there's a fifth temple on the Elephantine Island in southern Egypt towards the Sudan at the Blue Nile, okay? Oh, wow. This so, is all stuff so I've not looked into. Yeah, this is, you see how stupid your Alim are? They don't know these things. Yeah. You see, what have you been taught? You've been taught only to look at Quran and only to look at the Hadith, okay? And you miss what's going on in history right in front of you. Nobody's mm. teaching you these things. Mm. They don't want you to know. Satan does not want you to know. So what they're talking about now, this third temple, is actually the sixth temple, you see? Wow, well, that's a topic <laughs> in itself. <laughs> yes, it is. So... The sociopaths, I'm bringing this up to try and bring a, to broaden the picture here, because the sociopaths and the psychopaths at the very top of society are responsible for people not knowing these things. They don't mm. want you to know. They keep it out of the uh, official curricula at every level. They keep it out of the history books. You see, it's just not there because they don't want you to know how sick they are and how long they have been manipulating society. The psychopaths manipulate society. That's what they do. Mm. This whole thing about the COVID is a manipulation by psychopaths of the entire world. Yeah. You see, that's what's taking place here. So we're talking about a, a subject which is very important uh, and it's also important for people to understand as much about this as possible. 
I'm not an expert in psychopathy. I know some things about it. I don't know everything about it, but I do know enough about it that it needs to be discussed and it needs to be discussed carefully, okay? And not just superficially. Mm -hmm. You can't, yeah, this is you definitely, can't just, I mean, I think it's a very important topic because it also touches many aspects of the Quran. It also touches yes. the legal aspects of Quran, as you mentioned, or the legal aspects of Islam, because you have to, the judge has to discern, you know, is this uh, a, 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 a physical problem or if it's a, mm. a decision that that person made. Uh, uh, so, yeah. So, inshallah, uh, Dr. Omar, I'm sorry, I have to go today. Uh, of course. Uh, my body was aching because we were building a, a playground for the children and so we spent like a whole day but then i was like in pain for like the next two days um, oh <laughs> it's because you're out of shape my brother okay yes so that's what it is <laughs> yeah that, so, <laughs> that's what happens so uh, us, 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 us sedentary fellows you see we we have to do a bit more activity you know but i'm a, i'm a, i'm a, i've got an excuse now because i'm i'm old <laughs> and i'm handicapped so but you have no excuse <laughs> yes, <well. laughs> yeah. yeah anyway it's good for you do more of that wassalamu alaikum my brother thank okay. you for talking with me we'll pick up wanted. again on this uh, yes we'll pick as up soon on this. as possible okay all right inshallah. Mm.